Lesson number one, conceptual motion. How do we describe motion? Well, to describe the motion of an object, we need to answer four questions. First question being, where? Where is the object located? What is its position? And we can measure that position in meters. We use the variable x to represent the position of an object. Our next question is when? Otherwise, what time is this event occurring? And we're going to measure that time in seconds. We'll use the variable t to represent time. The next question is how fast? What's the speed or velocity of the object? And we're going to measure that in meters per second. Here you see the speedometer measuring 60 miles per hour as the object's velocity. Again, we'll use meters per second and represent velocity with the letter v. Last question would be how fast is the velocity changing? Otherwise, is the object accelerating? Meaning, how much is the velocity changing in meters per second every second? And here on this speedometer, you can see the velocity was this value here, and then increased and increased and ultimately increased to about 36 miles per hour. Again, we're going to use meters per second, per second, and we'll use the variable a for acceleration. Let's take a look at our definitions of our concepts. First concept being acceleration, which is any change in velocity. You can look at our speedometer right here. And maybe we start off at a speed of zero, and we start increasing our speed by hitting the accelerator or gas pedal. Since we're adding on speed, we'd say that's a positive acceleration rate. Or maybe we're already here at a certain speed, and we hit the brakes, and we're decreasing our speed. So we'd be subtracting off speed and having a negative acceleration. The direction here is important. Second concept is velocity. That's any change in position. So you can imagine yourself here at the starting line and running away from the starting line, increasing your distance, and having a positive velocity because we're adding distance. Or already being some distance away and running back towards the starting line, we'd be decreasing our distance, and that would be a negative velocity because we'd be subtracting off distance. Again, direction is important. Here are some examples of motion. This is a car I used to own back in the day, an Acura RSX. Let's see how it moves. Ready, set, go. Okay, let's see. If you were in the car there and you looked at the speedometer, maybe the speedometer reading would be something like this during that trip. So is the car accelerating? Well, no. We didn't see a change in speed there, thus the acceleration would be zero. What is happening to your speed? Well, if you watched it closely, that speed was constant, or we had a constant velocity. It was unchanging. It was constantly 20 during that entire trip. Another question to ask would be, what is happening to your distance? Well, if we looked at the car and said the car was here to start with, and we put a little marker here, maybe a second later the car was here, and another second later the car was here, another second later the car was here, and our last second our car is here. Well, if we can look at that distance, the car covered this distance in the first time, this distance in the second time, this distance in the third, and this distance in the fourth time. So that distance looked to be pretty constant. So we were covering the same distance in each time interval. Here's another example. Ready, set, go. Okay. So is the car accelerating? Well, if you looked at that speedometer in the car, maybe you would have seen it here to start with, and then here, and then here, and then here. You would have seen the speed of the car increasing. So is the car accelerating? Yes, it is. And since we're gaining speed, that would be a positive acceleration. What is happening to your speed? Well, we just said that that is increasing. So we have an increasing velocity. And here if we look and say, what is happening to your distance? Well, if we look that the car was here to start with, maybe a second later the car was here, another second later the car was here, another second later the car was here, and that last second the car was here. Well, if we look at the distance covered in the first interval, it was this much. If we look at the center, second interval, it's covered more distance. The third interval, even more distance. And that last interval, even more distance. So the distance we cover keeps increasing. So we're covering more distance in the same time. Okay, here's our last example. 
here you have to assume the car is already moving when you look. So maybe you close your eyes and you open them right when you hear the car moving. Ready, set, go. So in this case, is the car accelerating? Well, if you were in the car, you'd see the speedometer right here to start, and then maybe here, here, and here. So you would see the car losing speed as we brake to a stop. Is the car accelerating? Yes, it is. But now, since we're losing speed or subtracting speed, this would be a negative acceleration. What is happening to your speed? Well, our speed is decreasing. Let's say we have a decreasing velocity. And our last question, what is happening to your distance? Well, if we were here to start with again, we probably would have covered this much distance, and then this much, and then this much, and then this much. So we could see that our distance here in the first interval compared to the next one, compared to the next one, compared to the last one, we're really losing distance and covering less distance as time goes on. Mathematical definitions. So from those previous examples, we saw that our velocity tells you how our position is changing. And you can see our definition mathematically of velocity, this would be our average velocity, is our change in position, that's what this delta means, change in, over time. And that really means if we rewrote this, that that delta really means what's our final position, where are we now, minus where we were before, and how long did that take us to get there. So we would measure distance or position in meters, time in seconds, and hence our units of velocity are meters per second. If we look at acceleration here from the previous examples, it tells you how your velocity is changing. So we can see that acceleration here is the change in velocity per time. Otherwise, if we wrote this out, this would be what is our velocity now minus what was it before and how long did it take to change. So our units of velocity are meters per second. Time is in seconds. So if we look at this for a moment down here, if we take meters per second divided by seconds, well, that's just meters per second times 1 over seconds, the inverse. And we can see that our units of acceleration are meters per second squared. So I'll write that right in up here, meters per second squared. Thank you for watching, and see you in class.